How you going, you big bloody beautiful bastards? Here's me face. 2021. That's a thing that's happened. That's a calendar year that has almost finished occurring. It's heading towards a conclusion as we speak, and it was great. It was just a great, 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 great year. It was flawless. I can't... Yeah, it was really good to be back to normal after 2020. Remember 2020? <laughs> It was wild. It was a complete shitstorm, a dumpster fire, some say. I'm glad it's done, okay? It's all done. Just go with this, all right? I'm practicing living in deep denial. I've seen other people do it. They seem happy, so I'm trying it out as I age. Just please give me a go at it, all right? Just so glad. Glad. I'm just glad about everything. Smasher of a year for everybody on the planet. Zero negatives, no negatives, normalcy. 100%, 100%, 100%. 100% no, bugger me, I'm so sorry, I can't, I suck at denial, what a fuckity fuckaroo of a sequel to last year this one was. As usual, I don't know where to begin with the yearly recap video, so I'm just going to roll the footage on something and we can dissect the last 12 months as we go along. Here we go. We open on Ronaldo single-handedly destroying Coca-Cola. All the other brands quietly sneak under the radar in the background. Rono is like, I declare this the year we drink more water. Bloody Zuck got excited about that and whipped out his flag and hydrofoil surfboard from the garage. He started yelling, down with fizzy drink, down with fizzy drink. It makes me burpy, it makes me burpy. Fair enough, I suppose it is good to cut down on it in your 30s. This bear was looking for a nice place to pick Nick with its family. Unfortunately, it ended up in hostile territory. About 53 dogs plus one human ruined its picnic. I'd hate to be the neighbour to this house. One, there's too much noise. Two, you end up with bears pushed into your backyard. This person in New York won an award. The made-up award is called Most Skilled Parking Evacuator. As you can see, this is a bullshit position to be in. No one should ever, ever, ever have to put up with this in their daily life. The NYPD arrives on the scene, not to help or do anything, but just to watch. A heroic parking evacuator is the most methodical legend on the planet. I'll fast forward a little bit because I'm impatient. Yeah, the police fuck off. It's all good though, he's got it. Onlookers are like, hey, can you teach us how to do that? The parking evacuator's agent says, sorry, we don't do lessons. Then the man himself steps out of the car and yells, yo, no worries, give us your number and I'll teach you the way. It's completely baby proof, does not come off no matter how hard you pull it. Nothing should ever be advertised as baby proof. Three, two, one, company wrecked, stock plummeting more than Coca-Cola, ruthless. Meanwhile, over in Iceland, volcanoes and volleyball. This could definitely become a new sport, Volkball. That sounds tough, that sounds Icelandic. Surely volcanoes erupting badly is something we don't have to worry about. As if that will ever really happen, it's probably a once in a hundred fuck year thing. Sorry, I lasted 3 minutes and 15 seconds without referring to the pandemic. We are trying to live with it. He's trying. It is an absolute bastard of a pandemic, but thankfully we are inventing new technology daily. If we stay open-minded, we can get through it. She loves it. She loves her bloody tubby tub. But yeah, nah, yeah, that's enough virus-based content for now. If you're a member of civilization, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't throw hot soup in the face of another civilization member. She's like, yeah, it fucking stung my eyes. It was a bullshit day at work. I can't stop blowing out chilly boogies. Screw that bitch. One of the safest places to be in 2021 was probably on the road. I don't know why I said that. That's the dumbest thing I've ever said. Shit mixed. Oh my God. Roads in general are definitely some of the dodgiest places in the world. Some days trucks just broke down on the side of the road. They ended up cactus on fire for no apparent reason in 2021. Actually, perhaps the most graphic footage this year is from the Josh fight. A large gathering of people called Josh met in a park and tried to bludgeon each other to death with pool noodles. The winner would get to keep the name Josh. Everyone else would have to change their name. I thought Bobby Knocker Guy was going to win it, but in the end, Little Josh defeated everybody. Little Josh! Little Josh! Little Josh! <laughs> Raise your hand, little man! He's the winner! Woo! 
Wholesome scenes, to be honest. Thankfully, very wholesome. Equally as wholesome is this 93-year-old bloke getting into gaming. This is exactly how I want to spend my days when I'm old and crusty. All the work I'm putting in now is purely to achieve this bloody goal. His grandson says, yeah, it's pretty fucking funny. Sometimes he chucks a wobbly and throws the controls when he loses. He loves it overall, though. What's that on the shelf of a supermarket over in Sydney, Australia? Just a snake making sure we don't panic by this year. Back away from the herbs and spices. You do not need to purchase a whole carton of grounded cinnamon. Cinnamon is really yummy when sprinkled on top of coffee. The Matrix is my all-time favourite movie ever. Let's bloody see how the fourth one pans out in a week or so. Netflix picked up this TV show called Startup. It was excellent. I know it wasn't made this year, but I watched it this year, so I'm going to pretend it was made this year. Denial again. I want to include it here in the hope they'll make new seasons. It's about a tech startup that's pretty much the same as working at Aussie Man Reviews. Yeah, nah, nah, it is. Fucking Squid Game. I don't think we'll be able to think of 2021 without thinking of Squid Game. This was a mega hit. We enjoyed it so much in Australia that we put that creepy ass doll near the Harbour Bridge and Opera House. Nothing weird about that. It was one of those shows where you fight sleep to keep watching every night. Well, the toddler will be up in four hours. <laughs> Let's put on another episode. The Mr. Beast version was equally as intense. Okay, yeah, maybe not. No one was scared. He was going to kill them, unfortunately. He's too much of a top bloke. I finally got round to watching Warrior. Again, not made this year, but it was really damn good. I wish I could fight some days. Those who know me well know exactly what I'm looking forward to next year. Let's do it. Let's go through it all over again. But my favourite, 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 favourite visual art screen media content to watch this year was Deep Tom Cruise over on the TikTok. What's up, TikTok? What's up, TikTok? I'm gonna show you some magic. You got your ball, you got your own chain. <laughs> if I ever get invited to interview the real Tom Cruise, it's gonna be impossible for me to not ask him about deep Tom Cruise. Impossible. A mission impossible. <laughs> okay, this video is floundering now. Let's cross over to sport. Look away now. Look away if you don't want to see his ankle. Look away or squint. Go! The Olympics was fun. It's a thing you don't realise you care about until it starts. No one will ever beat the reaction of swimming coach Dino Boxall when it comes to victory celebrations. Choreographed dances, handstands, backflips. Nah, nah, you cannot beat dry humping a fucking fence. This was one of my favourite Olympic spirit moments. Look at that, there's a tumble. Keep an eye on the Sheila in orange. She's like, bullshit, no way I'm giving up on this race. Sneaks into third last. She catches up to all the wankers clogging up that middle area and cruises past them, barely breaking a sweat by the looks. Look at her go. Fucking no worries. And what about the home stretch? It's basically a walk in the park. She could stop have a coffee with friends. Yeah, no, yeah, she's, she's got it. It's no world record, but it's a top-notch comeback. It emphasises never giving up. Whereas over at the Euro Cup, the main aim of the game is to give up. Give up and roll on the ground until you get a free kick. Oh, what's that? No one cares. And your team scored a goal without you. Oh, yeah, go on. Go join the celebration as if you bloody contributed, mate. Dodgy. You absolute goose with the sign. We get given nice things in a pandemic and then a fuckwit nincompoop destroys it. One spectator holds up the entire Tour de France squad. My home city of Perth got to host the Australian football grand final. I reckon let us host it every year. No harm in giving it to us every year. Winner, winner, chicken dinner for the Australian cricket team in the T20 over in the Dubai. I do think the greatest sporting moment of the year goes to this dad, however. You legends like that one in the recent composure video. It is a highlight you can watch over and over again. Give him a seven-figure salary. Give him all the sponsorships. He's humble as well. I mean, no one saw it, so he's forced to be humble. Okay, Formula One fans, this was a great sporting moment in the last week. You done good, Verstappen. Mind you, his team had the same reaction to the dad kicking the ball. Have a look, have a look. They're playing this on their screen. Bam! They love it. They loved it. 
What about close to home? What was the news in my world and our Aussie man community this year? Well, together we raised 650 grand during Childhood Cancer Awareness Month back in September. So a big thank you for that again. That money went to a couple of dozen different families across the GoFundMe Australia website dealing with childhood cancer. In fact, fuck it. The link to the old campaign page, fucking homepage, is in the post description below if you want to say Merry Christmas and throw a few more bucks at kids and families going through the shitfuckery of cancer. I played cricket with the Australian team coach Justin Langer back in March. That was a charitable fundraising event as well. I will be joining the Ultimate Backyard Cricket Team lineup again in 2022. The link to the FB event page is below if you're in Perth and you want to come along. Bloody do it. Get involved. It's a fun time. I promise I won't drop as many catches as I did last time. No, no, no. I promise. I started a video licensing company. This is to minimise the risk of getting copyright claims and takedowns. So if you have a video you want to send me, please do it at aussieman.com slash submit. And please, please, please subscribe to the video licensing YouTube channel. The link is in the post description below to Aussie Man's video licensing. I've made a video on that channel explaining the whole thing. Please go and subscribe. Yeah, I mean, a lot of other shit happened off camera in my life. Nothing horrible, don't worry, but I'm not going to share it all with you because I have boundaries. Call me an old-fashioned social media personality. It's just, it's good to have some boundaries. Anyway, what about global news? <sighs> Let's do it. The Capitol riots. I don't know, American mates. It's all well and good to be passionate about a politician, but this crept into fanaticism and it did get out of hand. Actually, I should have included this police officer in a commentary about composure. He did a fucking good job and deserves the praise. It's time for movies to stop using real guns on set. That seems like a dumbass obvious thing to say, but if one bloke can recreate Tom Cruise using visual effects, then movie sets can recreate bloody gunfire with VFX. Unrest and conflict in South Africa. Sad as fuck footage of people trying to flee Afghanistan. A four-year-old girl kidnapped and found three weeks later was a big story down here in Western Australia. Prince Philip decided to jump off the planet. Speaking of the planet, everyone discussed it at that COP26 thing. I don't know if there was an outcome. Fuck yes to the ocean cleanup project, however. I do love a big-ass net. Ah, uh, the Suez Canal. None of us had heard of it until this year, really. Now, when international travel opens, I reckon it will become a tourist hotspot. This is peak sad 2021, isn't it? A couple of little excavators trying to dig this behemoth of a ship out of the mud. Evergreen. It certainly was a story that was evergreen. Billionaires kept working on their exit strategy from Earth overall. I hope Brano gives me a seat on his rocket. Hopefully he's a fan. Whereas Zuckerberg was like, we don't need to go to space. I can build a computer program we can all live in. How does that sound? Good? Sweet, no worries, I'll crack on with it. No, 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 just no. We know how that, don't, no way, stop it, unplug it. Guy in the background, go home, quit working, get another job. We know how this ends. No, 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 a crypto billionaire donated one billion to India for COVID relief. Oh, fuck yes, Vitalik. Oi, I realised I'm a hashtag crypto guru. No, I am. I signed up to the Brave browser back in January 2018 as a publisher. I forgot I did that for the last four years. I checked it the other day. I've already opened the beer. Bam, it's on. I fucking, <clears throat> big win, big win. I got 10,000 basic attention tokens in my, in my bloody Brave browser. So yeah, I don't know if I should tell everyone that on the internet, but why not? A bit of transparency is fine. And you know, a lot of crypto YouTubers out there are like, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not advice. So bugger it. I'll bloody fill that market. I'm a crypto advisor. I advise you to just put your money somewhere, forget about it for five years. Then when you find it again, big surprise. Just such a happy, happy surprise. Of course, that might not work all the time. 50% of the time it works every time, to quote Anchorman. But yeah, okay, look, this isn't financial advice. I'm not an advisor. I'm not. But if I was, guys, if I... If I was a hashtag crypto guru, just put your money somewhere, forget about it, check it again. Or if you want to do Comsec, if you're in Australia, or the NASDAQ, what, just 
put it down, forget about it, five years. Oh, I did that. I did that. Past me was so smart. So, yeah, that's that's not my advice because I'm not an advisor. But if I was giving advice, that's my advice, which, of course, it's not because I'm not an advisor. Anyway, let's do one more round of silly fucking videos to end this on a high note. <laughs> 10,000 bats. Thank you to everyone that's watched Aussie Man in the Brave browser. If you're not doing that, can you go do it? Thanks. See ya. <laughs> I'm just a seagull, I'm a nobody seagull, don't pay attention to me, oh fuck this, I'm so hungry, surely you wankers have something to eat in here for a famished gull, come on, where's the good stuff, oh yes, this is what I'm talking about, tasty, tasty snack, karate, yeah, karate, crack it open, party everyone, oh, nom 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 nom, yeah, nom 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 nom, free chips, Yannette Garcia started an OnlyFans account, I haven't signed up, nah, I haven't, I'm married with a kid, I can't can't spend time on this stuff anymore. It's not 2015, guys. Fucking hell. You don't need me to know what she's up to. Go follow her on your own. I mean, don't follow her in person. That's dodgy. Crikey, looks like there's a lot of different outfits. Anyway, the point is, I haven't signed up. Married, kid, can't afford it. There's her neck. Here's Mario shaking his ass. Why are we watching Mario shake his ass? Because this was big over on the TikTok. This bloke who likes emus has become a full-time ass shaker. I might sign up to his OnlyFans. Look at the bloody pants clinging onto the belt for dear life. Honestly, as a married man with a three-year-old, these are the types of videos I'm into these days. If the TikTok algorithms could serve me more truck-based content, that would be fantastic. This is a fair dinkum incredible accomplishment. I, I reckon he could start an OnlyFans account to do with teabagging and opening a cafe. How's he going to put the milk in? Or has he already put the milk in first? Let's not start that debate. This has been my favourite music-based channel to watch. It's basically a soundtrack for life. Fuck yes, Achika Nito. Fuck yes, mate. This makes me feel like playing Deep Purple on my guitar again. This is the creepiest story of the year. This Sheila was like, I wonder what's behind my bathroom mirror. Turns out there's a whole other room behind your bathroom mirror sometimes. Or a whole other house. This is the exact premise of that Oscar-winning Korean film, isn't it? Who's going to be the first to die? Probably the bloke. That guy at the back. Yeah, yeah, John, he's Cactus. I can see how this entire story will unfold already. Here's my final summary of 2021. Because systems are very... Duh. That's accurate. This year did feel like a big mattress falling on us. We try to move forward, we try to move forward, and then... Big mattress keeps falling on us. Anyway, a sincere heartfelt thank you to everyone that has watched my channel in 2021. Old subscribers, new subscribers, middle-aged subscribers, not middle ages, I'm not being ageist, it's if you've been watching three to four out of the almost eight years I've been Aussie manning. I can't do what I do without you guys and I do really appreciate it. So yeah, remember to hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button as well so you always know when a new video is out. And please do subscribe to that licensing channel I mentioned that I started. All of the links are in the post description below to all the fun stuff I've, I've talked about. Please do click the shit out of them. Have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and bring on 2023! Uh, 2022! <laughs> I go, well, look, maybe we could just time travel forward by a year. There's no harm in that. We can skip 2022 if you want. Leave a comment below about something that I missed that happened this year. That's always fun with these recap videos of the year. You guys are like, Ozzy, man, how could you miss that? How did you miss that happening? That was so big. That news was everywhere and you did not, did not talk about it. Ozzy, put it in the comments, all right? Man, I'm sweating in this hoodie because it's summer. But where some of you are watching, it's winter. So that's why I'm really dedicated to the merch cause here. <laughs> um, thank you again. And I really appreciate you guys watching. Have a good one. Let's end on Snoop Dogg forgetting that he had a live stream on and then coming back and realizing he had a live stream on. So yeah, let's end on that. Cheers. See ya. Bitch, bitch, if I have to, you know why. I'm 
Am I still streaming? I would hope not. 